Peace and love, family. You already know what it is. Welcome back to another episode as we live life out loud with purpose. Remember, folks, if you hear anything that resonates with you, any truths that you can make applicable, anything that you think anyone else needs to hear, please like and share the video. Give me a thumbs up, folks. It's free. It's absolutely free. Costs you nothing. Give me a thumbs up. It lets YouTube know that my content is valuable and worthy to be seen. So, folks, um, remember, live life out loud with purpose today we're going to talk about um, a couple different things I'm gonna get right into it um, for the most part what I want to talk to you about is happiness and not just happiness um, um, where do you find joy joy now, folks, I, I, I want to make a, a clear distinction. So, uh, a, a quick disclaimer. Um, joy and happiness is two different things. In order to have happiness, you have to have something to be happy about. And happiness is temporal. It's based on other things. We have a formula built inside of us for happiness. We say A plus B equals C. Um, if my son brings home a good grade, I'm going to be happy. My son being A, good grade being B equals C, happiness. Um, same thing, uh, my wife makes my favorite meal, I'm happy. My wife being A, my favorite meal being B, um, I'm happy being C. So, just like a formula for happiness, we also have a formula built in for um, sadness or disappointment. So, we say A plus B equals C, same formula. My son brings home a bad grade, I'm unhappy. A plus B equals C. You know, same thing with the, my wife and a bad meal. My wife makes a bad meal, I'm unhappy. A, my wife, B, bad meal equals C on happiness. So we have a formula built inside for happiness and we have a formula built inside for sadness. And um, I'm saying that to say this folks, the formula doesn't necessarily have to be. So I don't know if you ever heard the phrase cognitive dissonance. That's when um, the things that we think or do don't always line up. You know, so we have to do things to shift our paradigm so that um, we can almost trick our brain into thinking things that isn't always the norm. So um, a perfect example, um, I start my day with gratitude every day and it doesn't matter how I'm feeling. You know, um, I'm just trying, I just try to be grateful every day. So even if I wake up and I'm not always in a good mood, I put on my um, praise music. I'll do the things that are, is necessary to get me in that headspace. You know what I'm saying? So I train my, I'm training my brain to constantly be grateful every day, no matter how I'm feeling physically. You know, cognitive distance. Um, look it up, folks. Uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's worth the look up. So anyways, um, another thing I think we do is uh, we make other people, we put p other people in charge of our happiness. We make other people responsible for our happiness, you know, for that formula that we have built inside, you know, and um, when other people don't live up to our expectations, then we're disappointed in them. You know, so, you know, how dare you put somebody else in charge of your happiness or make somebody else responsible for you being happy or you finding joy? You know, how could you make your kids, your husband, your wife, your friend, your parent, your sibling, 
be responsible for your happiness. And then when they don't live up to your expectations, you mad at them. Because you made them in charge of you being happy. So the minute you're not happy because you're in charge of it, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, kid, son, daughter, you're in charge of my happiness. So um, I'm not happy. You messed up. Now I'm mad at you. You did not live up to my expectations. How dare you? You're disappointing. You disappointed me. I'm disappointed in you for not making me happy. How dare you not make me happy? You know, but folks, truthfully, that's exactly what we do to people every day. And, you know, and then another thing that, that, that really hurts the situation is, you know, do you even know what makes you happy? What are those things that you say um, are the cause of your happiness? Because, you know, we grow every day. And if you are anything like me, as I grow, my appetite for life grows. And the things that I may find happiness in today, I may not find happiness in tomorrow. And because I grow and I'm, I'm, I'm a growing creature, um, I grow in and out of happiness for different reasons, for different things, uh, for different things, you know. For instance, um, I can remember uh, pizza. I love pizza. Pizza made me happy. Got full enjoyment out of it. I moved to another state and they don't serve good pizza. So pizza no longer makes me happy. <laughs> I don't find joy in it. I don't want bread with somebody's sauce and scattered cheese on it. Doesn't appeal to me. No longer makes me happy. You know, um, I can remember when I was young, uh, okra. I hated okra. Now I find happiness in okra. You know, um, when I was young, my grandfather would always put the Westerns on on a Saturday. Um, I always wanted to watch wrestling, and the Kung Fu movies would come on on Saturday. And, I, and I'd always want to watch, but he'd always put them Westerns on, man. And I hated it. But today I find solitude in watching a Western, a good Western. I like it. I love it, man. I look forward to it. You know, so again, um, we shift, we grow. And as we do this, it's not fair if you make someone else responsible for your happiness and then you're growing and you're changing every day and you're not keeping them up on your changes. You know what I'm saying? So you have to, if you're gonna make someone else responsible for your happiness, then you also, then you have to be responsible for telling them when your happiness shifts, when you're, when, when the things that make you happy changes. When those things changes, you have to be mature enough to say, hey, I know um, last week I said X, Y, Z made me happy, but now I need you to add a little something else to it, you know, and that's just how it is. So. Today, we're gonna to talk about the perfect sandwich. So building a perfect relationship is like building a perfect sandwich. Let's say in the beginning of a relationship, you know, you happy just getting in between these two slices of bread. That's all it is to make you happy. But then, you know, you, you know you've been in that relationship for a little while and just getting in between them two slices of bread ain't enough anymore. So you say, you know, I, I need you to put something on it. You know, if we're gonna be in a relationship, I need you to put a little, little, little something on this thing. You know, this sandwich. So you ask for mustard. I need you to put a little mustard on that sandwich. That thing is gonna tie that sandwich in, it's gonna make it good. So you got the bread and now they done added some mustard. And then they even put some mayonnaise on it. And you ain't even asked for this mayonnaise. 
but you like this mayonnaise, so you ain't complaining. So you got your sandwich, two pieces of bread that you were happy getting in between. Now you ask for a little mustard, they put some mustard on it, and then they put some mayonnaise on it that you didn't even ask for, but you like this mayonnaise, so you happy with this sandwich. But then after a while, you know, you say, um, I need more. Um, if we're really gonna build this relationship, I need some substance. I need you to add some meat. I need you to put some substance into this sandwich. I need you to put some meat in it. So, now you got the bread that you were once happy with. And now, you you asked for some mustard. You wanted some a, 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 little, a little something on it. They gave you the mustard, mayonnaise too, that you didn't even ask for, but you liked the mayonnaise, so you didn't complain. And now they add some meat to it. Now you got some substance. Then some more time goes on. And you say, you know what? I'm liking the sandwich. Um, it's really good. I, I know I was happy with the bread. You know, and, and then, you know, I asked for a little, little mustard on it. And you put some mustard on it. You even spanked it with some mayonnaise, baby. And I appreciate that mayonnaise because I really like it. You put some extra on it, and I like that extra. Then I actually put a little substance into it, and I'm so happy with the substance, baby. But if we're really going to build this thing, I need you to add some green to it. You got to put some green in here. We need some green in the, in, 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 in the mix. So they add the green. Now you got the bread. You got the mustard, you got the mayonnaise that you didn't even ask for, but you happy with the mayonnaise. You asked for meat, they gave you substance, now you want green and they done added some lettuce. Wow, this sandwich is coming together, man. But some more time goes by and you say this thing just ain't juicy enough anymore. You know, baby, it's been a while. You know, some time has went on. I was so happy with the bread in the beginning. Then you put the mustard on my sandwich like I asked you for. You even added mayonnaise. I didn't even ask you for that. And I'm so happy with this mayonnaise. Oh, girl. I love you for the mayonnaise. I asked for meat. You gave me meat. I asked for green. You gave me green, baby. But here's the thing. I need you to tie this thing all together. I need you to bind this thing up, baby. So I'm going to need you to add some cheese to this thing. Now, if you're in the perfect relationship, the conversation should go like this. Well, baby, you asked for bread, I gave it to you. I even put some mayonnaise on that thing and you ain't asked for that. And I know you like it. You only asked for mustard, but I put some mayonnaise on it too. And, and you said you needed some substance in it, so I added the meat, the green, because you, you said it, we, we needed to, to start building. Baby, what is it? What do you mean it's not juicy enough? Or you need me to bind this thing together with some cheese? I got you. And if it's not juicy enough, baby, I'm even willing to add the tomato. Because I'm willing to do that for you. And no matter what, as long as you, and, and as long as we're in the building stage, I don't care how high or far this sandwich goes to. Baby, I'm always gonna be building with you. But the moment the relationship comes to a halt is when that other person is no longer willing and the key word is willing to do what the other requires. You may not ever require them to add the cheese. You may not never require them to add the uh, tomato. But the fact that they're willing to do it means everything. In the moment that they're unwilling, people can't get mad at you because now you don't went and got you a pickle on the side. 
how they gonna be mad at you? You got you a pickle on the side because they were unwilling. So, folks, listen. I'm going to leave you with this. I challenge you today to hang out with you. Be a blessing to you today. I woke up today, man, and I like me. I woke up today and I was Trenton Jenkins. I was Trenton Jenkins with my wife or without my wife. I was Trenton Jenkins with my kids or without my kids. I was Trenton Jenkins with my parents or without my parents. I was Trenton Jenkins and there ain't nothing nobody can do to add to me to make me more Trenton Jenkins and ain't nobody can do anything to take anything away from me to make me less than Trenton Jenkins. So I challenge you today to like you, hang out with you, be your friend today, be your biggest fan. Nobody should be celebrating you like you. You should be your biggest fan. Rah, rah, hey, yay, me. You know, and nobody can cheer me on better than me. I love my wife. I love my kids. And I know this may sound selfish to you, but I put me first, them next. And I'm going to tell you why. Because anytime I do not take time for me first and make sure I'm in a great space, then I can't do nothing for them. And, you know, I take time to make sure I'll plan my, my meals for the day. I plan what I'm going to wear. You know, and I take all these necessary plans for what I'm going to do today. And I, do I also take plan for my mental health? You know, that's very important. Something that we neglect every day. You know, I brush my teeth for my hygiene health. I wash up for my, um, I mean, I wash up for my hygiene health. I brush my teeth for my oral health. But what do I do every day for my mental health? You know, how do I prepare for that every day? I brush my teeth, comb my hair, and do all these other things to get ready for the day. But do we take a mental break every day and check in and make sure I'm in a great space? Am I doing what I need to do? Am I operating at the level and the capacity that I need to to get the performance out of me that I need to get the day done? And if I'm not what adjustments do I need to make? And am I willing to make those adjustments? You know, and the thing is, again, folks, once you come to a halt, a halt is not, um, a failure is not a, a brick wall. It doesn't say that we stop here. You know, it just says, hey, we need to figure out another way. We need to figure out something else today. You know, so what do you need to figure out today? What's the other way you need to do it today? So again, folks, I challenge you to love you today as I love me. I woke up in great space today, great head space. And um, I'm willing to share that with you today, folks. So if you hear anything that resonates with you, any truth that you can make applicable, Please like and share this video, hit the thumbs up button, let YouTube know that you like this content and they need to share it and get this content out there. Cost you nothing, family, to hit, give the thumbs up button. It is absolutely free. It costs you nothing. Let's take that time and do that for me right now. Hit the bell so you can be notified the next time I put up some of this awesome content for you. I do this for you. This is me working for you. All right, love you, family. Peace and love.